Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and on today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys how exactly do you sell your deals. So you already got a contract with a seller, but now what's the next steps? How do you sell the deal? How do you handle the disposition side of things where you sell the deal to a cash buyer and you go ahead and assign your agreement? So in this video, I'm going to be covering that whole process, hopefully making it crystal clear on how um, you can go ahead and assign the agreement and get your assignment fee and get paid. So let's get to the video, guys. So as you can see on my screen here, I have a I have a lucid chart that I went ahead and prepared. This is just kind of a whole process. It's supposed to look kind of like a conveyor belt of how things are supposed to go. So this first one is AM pushes lead to disposition manager. So the acquisition manager, the one that's actually acquiring the deals, goes ahead and gives you this agreement um, that they locked it up. If you're just a one man job, then you know you are the acquisition and the disposition. So you locked up an agreement, you locked up a contract with the seller at a good price. Um, the things are gonna work, but what you gotta do now is you gotta prepare the Google Drive with photos. There's a lot of steps that you gotta take before you can actually get the property open with escrow and put the contract with the title company. First thing, you should have had your title company view the property and take a bunch of pictures of the inside. If you didn't do that, um, then I def definitely recommend this is the time for you to go ahead and check the property out and get a bunch of pictures to prepare for the Google Drive. So a lot of these buyers that you send the, these uh, deals to, they can buy it sight on scene if you provide enough pictures so here is a list of all the things you need to take a picture of when you have the property the front of the house and the yard back of the house yard kitchen family room living room dining room bedrooms laundry room storage room basement major hallways the pool if it has one the water heater the ac unit furnace the electrical panel the pipes the plumbing the water leaks um roof and a video tour a video tour is always best so they can see exactly how everything looks just to make sure nothing slips under the cracks and then the deal falls through because it needs something that you didn't know at the beginning. So always make sure you get enough pictures. That way you don't have to come keep coming to the property and have more buyers coming through or having the buyer come through. If you have enough pictures, you really won't need people coming in and out. 70% of buyers that are professionals don't need to see the property with pictures that are taken good They can actually go ahead and purchase the property just like that and deposit the earnest deposit with the title company So make sure you take a screenshot whatever you got to do and get all these pictures Nice and done so this so uh, the buyer can take a look and they won't have to view the property and they can just buy it like that and make it super smooth for you so I'm gonna take this out now this is kind of an example of a property that I was working on, uh, how I had the all the photos in the Google Drive. So as you can see, I have a bunch of pictures in this Google Drive. It's called uh, New Jersey. And kind of took a picture of the back. I'm not sure you could see. Okay, so I took a picture of the back. Took a picture of the side. Honestly, you see it's not even professionally taken. It's, it could just be a nice picture taken with your iPhone. The side, I took a picture of the front. This is kind of what they want to see. Picture of the front. Got a bunch of pictures, guys, here of the kitchen. Let me show you what that looks like right here. Nice and big. Uh, took a bunch of pictures of the kitchen. So you guys get the idea. I got like 30 pictures in here. We can go all day. I even got some videos um let me show you guys this video see if i can get to play the whole point is to get enough quality pictures so your buyers will have an easy time on approving things so here's me i was walking around this property i took this video right here to kind of show the back I had a really back really small backyard and then that was the other side of the house the other different house over there that's the seller. So let's go ahead. As you can see, get an idea of what it looks like. I got the kitchen. This is the last video I'm showing you guys. But you should pretty much upload. Okay, there we go. Kitchen. Little bunch of pictures. Yeah. His kitchen was pretty much a mess. He was kind of a hoarder. Anywho, 
This is how you should have a file, the, the Google Drive folder with all the pictures. That way you can just send the link easily. Just go ahead and send this link. Copy it and you're going to send that link when you create the campaign for the cash bars. So now that you prepared the Google Drive with all those photos, um, you have to do comps now. You have to reevaluate the property. You have to do comps again. Um, make sure you have solid comps. I recommend three solid comps. Uh, make sure that they're in the same zone. Um, let me see if I can pull up some notes that I have here for comps. Um, that's going to have to be a different video because comps is really long. Let me see. No, I think I have something. Yeah, nah. So for comps, you just really have to go into prop stream, see houses that were selling for, you know, retail, houses that are flipped up. You can even find your cash bars through there. So do comps. Um, definitely find a property that's super similar to the property they have in a contract. It's in the same location, same year. It's sold within at least six months. It can be 15 or 15. It could be 15 years more or less than the property that you're comping. It has to be, you know, single family. If it's a single family, it has to be in the same district. And it definitely does have to be the same square feet, same lot size, and uh, same uh, bedrooms and baths. So make sure that you're not using bad comps because you definitely don't want to be out there putting bad comps and then uh, these buyers really don't want to work with you anymore. So make sure you get really good at running comps so you can figure out the property value and that's going to help you. Make sure you figure out three properties, three comps. That's going to help you when you build your little campaign for marketing to cash buyers. So now we got prepare the Google Drive photos. We have our three comps that justify what our asking price is, what it is. Um, then we're going to go ahead and either call them, send them a message, or email those cash buyers. So you should already have pulled a list of cash buyers, and you're going to go ahead and target them. When you reach out to them, doesn't matter if you call them, text them, or email them. You want to give them the address of the property, the beds and baths. You want to tell them the closing date. You want to go ahead and list your three comps. And uh, that's pretty much all you really got to give them at first glance. They're going to open it up and then they're going to reach out to you to have more questions. But this is what you're going to have to give them. Highly recommend you never, ever, ever give them a repair cost because every single buyer has their own different repair cost. Either they're hiring a crew or they're going to do it just themselves, which will be super cheap. And if you give them an estimated repair cost, they're going to be able to negotiate down. And honestly, if it takes them 20K to make 20K in repairs and your repair is saying like 40, 45, they're just going to go, they're just going to go with it. They're just going to assume that you're going to tell you it's going to take them that price when in reality they could have given you more when it wasn't going to cost them that much to fix it. So never, ever, ever put repair costs because it's only going to hurt you. And it's honestly, cash buyers don't care about what you think it costs to fix. They have their numbers. They will run their numbers. You don't need to give that to them. All you got to give them is the address, beds and baths, closing date, price, price, and comps. These are different things. So the price that you're asking for this property and the comps to justify what you're asking and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also mention to them that you're looking to assign the contract. And they most of them are going to be familiar with what you're doing. Now, you send out this campaign to a lot of people, a lot of cash buyers. Everyone's taking a look. People are sending you messages. They want to view the property. And let's say you got a high, the highest bid possible, right? Now, um, definitely go ahead and sign with the person that you agreed to sign with even if it's not the highest offer sometimes it's just about integrity so sign with who you feel comfortable with and who's giving you a decent price um always go ahead never commit to one person always commit to the person that's going to put the deposit down in 24 to 48 hours so you send the agreement to the highest offer or whatever right 
In the agreement, you should have a clause. So the assignment agreement, you should have a clause that states, I'm going to go ahead and break it down right here, right here, that the assignee, which is the buyer, will return, I mean, will deliver a refundable earnest deposit, a non-refundable earnest deposit of $2,000 to be held in escrow at title company of the signee's choice by 5 p.m., at this date basically saying that if the buyer doesn't deposit this amount then um, either this contract is forfeited or you can just keep talking to other cash buyers because they haven't made their mind up i think that's a great idea always make sure you give them at least a deadline don't tell them that oh they have a whole week to check it out no they have 48 hours if they don't sign you're going to keep telling more people about it and whoever sends the deposit to the title company first is going to get the property simple as that so now that you've seen that you're picking up action and that there's a lot of people interested in the property you've shown them the pictures they've seen the pictures they like it they want it this is what you got to do now you're going to go ahead and open up escrow so you're going to call your wholesaling friendly title company you're going to tell them hey i have an agreement here's the agreement um only submit that when you have a lot of cash buyers interested because you know the deal will close and you're not going to have to come out of pocket for anything okay so you can either wait until the buyer signs the assignment of a contract and then when they sign it, you deposit it. You give those both agreements to the title company. So you give them the sale purchase agreement with the seller and the assignment. And then the earnest deposit will go, will be taken from the deposit that the cash bar gives you when they sign the assignment. They're going to give this deposit to the title company in order for you to stop marketing this property to other buyers. Simple as that. It's just business. You got to make sure you're strict with them. They have 24 to 48 hours to sign. And if they don't, then you're going to keep moving because you have an inspection period and you got to get things done quickly. Then that moves us to the next step. Um, let me go ahead and just open up a bunch of objections that have been getting from buyers. And I think it's just very important to break this down. So if the buyer is asking you, what did you pay for the house? I honestly... There's none of their business what you got it under contract for. They'll end up finding out either way, but it's none of their business. Um, as you could tell them, as a policy, we don't disclose what we pay for the property. Uh, we could have inherited it and paid nothing. And yet the most important thing is that it, you buy at a price that works for you. So scenario number one, the buyer, he's the only buyer making offers on the house, right? Everyone else is not making an offer on the house, which probably means that you don't have a deep discount and it's not a deal. So in that case, if they're the only person making offers, then uh, you just tell them, um, what is it that you were thinking of offering for this house? If they offer you less than what you pay for it, then tell them that, you know, there's no way that you could do that price because you did lock it up you did lock it up a little bit higher than that you can even go ahead and tell them what price would you need to be at if i was able to negotiate back with the seller and then just lock it up try to renegotiate if it's not a deal but scenario two you get lots of action um from this deal everyone's hitting you up they're like oh my god i'm willing to pay everything the price works la, 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 i'm ready to close now then um if the buyer, the specific buyer is asking you for what you pay for the house, then you don't really, it doesn't really matter. It's a good deal. They don't need to know what you pay for the house. You, They don't need to know that. It's If it works, the number works, and good, it works. When you tell the cash buyer your price, make sure it's already included with the assignment fee. So if you tell the cash buyer, oh, this property is worth 20, I mean, this property is worth $100,000 then you should have a contract with the seller like a 90 or 85. So then you can make a nice $15,000 right there. So make sure that you give them the price that's already included with your fee. You don't want to give it to them later. You want to give it to them right there when you market the property to them. The price needs to have your, your assignment fee already included. Okay, so let me just pull those notes back up. Now, if the cash bar is like, hey, I want to speak to the owner directly, that's not going to happen, guys. 
Um, you're going to tell them, I currently hold an ownership interest in this property per my contract, and I'm looking to assign this to investors like yourself and many others that I come across. Um, if you have any questions, you could definitely ask me, but don't talk about price to the seller. If you have any questions, definitely we'll view the property together. You can ask the you can ask the owner or anything, but do not talk about price and make it clear that if they do go through that walkthrough with you and talk about price, that you'll never, ever, ever, ever bring any deals to them ever again. And you'll just never work with them because they're trying to cut you out the deal. So make sure you let them know straight up. Now, that's when it goes over here to when showing the property. You're going to tell the buyer, I'm going to make an appointment. So, you know, obviously when the cash buyer is interested, some of them want to view the property. That's going to be their inspection period. When they view it that one day, they're professionals. That's all they really need. You're going to tell them, I'm going to make an appointment to see the property. Uh, you can ask any questions you'd like to the owners um, or the representatives about the property. But I would ask that you don't talk about pricing to anyone but me. In addition, I've told the owner that you are my funding source partner so that closing it's cr it's a uh, congruent with you being told as the end buyer. So that just means you tell them the buyer right before the buyer hits you up, you send them the campaign, they're interested, they say I want this property. Now you have to get them to view the property, right? When they're viewing the property, you got to let them know that they are not allowed to talk about price with the seller. They can only talk about price with you nobody else they cannot break those rules you got to set those standards very high okay now after the buyers obviously walk the property they like it they'll deposit the escrow deposit with the title company and if they don't then you'll find other buyers you keep moving keep pushing also another tip is before you have any cash buyers view the property make sure you send them all the pictures and you ask them what price they think they need to be at what kind of price do they think they could be at? Because you don't want to not qualify them. And then you're asking 100000 but they're coming to view the property and they can only offer you 60000 Like, it's just never going to happen. No way, ever. And you're going to have to have them walk through and then find another buyer. And at some point, the, the seller is going to get tired of you having people walk you having people walk through the property over and over and over again so make sure you use those times a lot slots wisely and you pick your cash buyers wisely because you don't want to be walking several people through you only want to have to walk one or two people that's why we take very good pictures guys that's why we take very 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 good pictures so this doesn't happen to us so the the cash buyer walked the property they talked to the seller they did not talk about price now they liked it they're gonna go ahead either deposit the money with escrow or they're going to tell you hey it's not going to work for me i'm sorry and you tell them okay well what price do you need to be that they'll tell you the price and you'll tell them okay i'll keep you in mind and you'll keep pushing your goal looking for more buyers if every buyer is telling you the kind of the same thing that they need to be lower then you don't have a deal period you just don't have a deal but if every buyer is like oh yeah yeah like the price then you have a deal definitely protect your deal Keep it safe and make sure you're picking the highest and best offer. Once you pick the highest and best offer, uh, definitely send them the assignment contract. Send those two contracts to the title company. Now, boom, we are going to be working with the title company, making sure that the seller provides all the mortgage information for the payoffs. Uh, you have to let the title company work and call the sellers. But just make sure that they're communicating. All you have to do is make sure that the agent is getting the title agent gets all the information they need from the seller, that the seller is picking up the title agent's calls, that everything is flowing smoothly. You don't want to ever get too involved, but you just want to kind of be in the background, checking in on the seller, making sure they're doing what they're asked and making sure that the title company's not having trouble reaching out to the seller so you don't delay anything. After that, um, it says same thing here work with title company to get loan information lien payoffs same thing call a title agent or escrow officer to get updates always call the title company or email them to just get updates on what's going on if the payoffs are ready uh when's the closing day just kind of keeping everything smooth and flowing right you don't want anything to pop up last minute you know that the seller hasn't been reaching out for two weeks and title company can't get a hold of them and now closing is pushed back you don't want to do with that so I hope this video helped you guys out. Remember, as soon as you get the contract, you got to prepare the Google Drive with photos. You got to reevaluate comps. 
pick three nice comps that's going to help you prepare for when you talk to your buyers. The comps, figure out the value of why you're asking the price that you're asking, and figure out how you're going to reach out to these cash buyers. Are you going to text them? Are you going to call them or email them? When you reach out to them, make sure you have the address on hand, the bedroom and bath, the square feet. Um, put this closing date. Put the price you're asking. The price you're asking should already have your assignment fee included. And those three comps that you had to find out first. So have all that information ready for them. Um, either send it to that information an email. Make sure they have access to the Google Drive photos when you send everything together to them. Um, after that, you're going to be getting bids from different guys. And uh, you don't want to have a bidding war, but you want to pick the highest and best offer. Whoever puts the deposit down when escrow wins, if they don't put it down in the 24 to 48 hours, you'll keep moving looking for more buyers. Forget them. After that, if they need to view the property, get them into the property. Let them know the conditions that they can not talk about price with the seller. They can only talk that with you, but they can ask any other questions, no problem. And that let them know that you told the seller that they're your funding partner and that's all that they are. Simple. Then um, just got to check in with the title company and make sure. Okay, wait, wait. I actually realized I didn't mention escrow. So once you're seeing that you're getting a lot of attention, with the property and that all these buyers are saying it's a good deal and they keep offering you things then you will open escrow if you want to come out of pocket you can open it then or you can wait until you have a signed contract with the buyer and then call the wholesaling title company and give them the seller contract and give them the assignment contract with the buyer that way you don't have to put any earnest deposit down the buyer will put that for you. And if they don't put it down, you got to move on. Keep finding that cash bar. So definitely, let me, so definitely during this time here, you are going to open escrow. Open escrow. Okay. I spelled it wrong, but whatever. Open escrow. Remember, guys, one or two things. Either you're picking up action or you're not. If you're not picking up action, then definitely don't open escrow just yet. Hold off until you have an uh, interested cash buyer. But if you're picking up an out of action, no problem. Open escrow. You shouldn't have a hard time finding a buyer. After that, send them the agreement. Um, make sure the title company confirmed with the title company that they got the earnest deposit, that they got the deposit, that you know, it's supposed to be given the non-refundable deposit. It should say non-refundable deposit. And uh, da, 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 da. after that, work with the title company to make sure that the seller gives all the information, the payoffs. Call the escrow officer to get updates all the time to make sure everything's working smoothly. Then at the closing table, the seller will get paid and you will... After the title's clean, you will just assign to the cash bar. Simple as that. This, the buyer will sign off. They'll get the house. Seller will be paid. And the leftover money is your assignment fee.